If I were to ask you what your top five best stars were, I think the list would be something like this. Polaris, Beetlejuice, Proxima Centauri, The Sun, of course, and T. Coronae Borealis. Polaris would be there, of course, because you Northern Hemisphere people use it to get a good enough polar alignment and it's got some IFN, some Integrated Flux Nebula around it, which is a challenge to image but possible and looks amazing. Beetlejuice, of course, because it's so dynamic and really interesting scientifically and it's been teasing us with the possibility of going supernova anytime soon. At least anytime in the next 100,000 years or the next five minutes, possibly. Proxima Centauri because it's just close. It's in the name, Proxima. It's close enough that it's probably the best candidate for extraterrestrial communication. The Sun, of course, because it's our star. It's close enough that we can actually image uh, visual details on it, solar flares. We can see the surface level detail, stuff, you know, stuff that we can't do with any other star. And of course, T. Coronae Borealis, which has been teasing us every 80 years for the last 800 years with this reoccurring supernova where it suddenly appears as a naked eye star and then disappears just as quickly. It's been tickling our bits all of this year, promising that it would be any time now, but it never follows through to completion. And I'm moving on. It's time to play with another boy. And while I mostly agree with that list, there is one star that has to be on mine, and that's Eta Car. The craziest looking star we've ever studied in the biggest and craziest nebula you can see from Earth. In this video, I am chasing Karina, but I am going deep this time. Thanks to upgrades in the Backyard Observatory, I'm using the C14 Edge HD and imaging at the full native focal length, 3910 millimeters, which should get me closer than I've ever been before. G'day, my name is Dylan O'Donnell from the Byron Bay Observatory, and you're watching Star Stuff. Look, I haven't had a lot of clear weather lately. Um, none, really, uh, for months and months. I just haven't had a single clear night. So when the opportunity presented itself, of course, I'm not just gonna get my main daily driver out, I'm gonna get my new favorite telescope as well. So two of my favorite telescopes. And look, I couldn't resist the opportunity of that thumbnail and this title, but spoiler alert, both of these telescopes are gonna produce amazing results in their own way. But really my goal here was to do a deep dive on Eta Car. But there's a lot of stuff going on here and a lot of new tech in the observatory. Obviously I've got the Q Focuser from QHY and the new Mini Cam 8. This brilliant new all-in-one monochrome camera with filters, plus the Apertura 75Q Quintuplet Petsvale design with no back focal distance issues. And I'm using my new Focuser from Prima Lucha as well, but all of this while piggybacking the spectroheliograph with the Skywatcher doublet on top. There is a, a lot going on here, so hopefully it was worth the thumbnail. Ah, uh, old dude out. I need a Jew ring, you know, the Celestron Jew ring to go to the heater, but I don't have that yet. Damn it. It's never that easy, is it? I mean, I could get a hairdryer, but what's the point of having an observatory if you need to run out with a hairdryer? What I need is a Celestron C14 Dew Ring. And I've had the Dew Ring installed in previous telescopes as well, but because this is a newer telescope, I just hadn't had it on. So I went looking for one and could not find one in stock, except for Testar. I've got to thank Testar, not only for the C14 Dew Ring that I just ordered, but also because they are sponsoring this video. Their website is www.testar.com.au and they operate out of Sydney, Australia. They have a huge range of brands and products, great prices. They do a lot of engineering in-house and they're really, really helpful. Their website's really great and they always seem to have that thing that I need. I hear a lot of good things about Testar from my True Blue Australian friends. Thanks for sponsoring the video, Testar. And if you are a True Blue Aussie, go check them out, testar.com.au. Thank you. 
In Carina is Edekar, surrounded by the Homunculus Nebula. So it has this binary shell around it. It's this bright star in the middle of the frame. Now, when you're exposing a nebula, typically you just run your exposures at any length you want, right? Three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and then you stack them and then you get an image. But when you photograph a really bright nebula, like Orion M42, there's a region in the middle near the trapezium for M42 where it just blows out, right? So you have to expose that separately or process it in such a way that you stretch the histogram level separately and then, and then process it in a way that exposes a high dynamic range across the frame. This is really extreme with Carina because Eda Car, if you want to see any of the detail, first of all, you need a big telescope, but second of all, you need to be exposing a wildly different exposure length. So I should be taking Eda Car at like one second frames or even less, like imaging it like a planet and then compositing that into the final image. See that? These are one second exposures of Eda Car and you can see the outburst. You can see the homunculus shape. I don't know if this is the right way to do this, but uh, I'll give this a go first. Okay, let me show you some of this data. So this is the O3, this is the HA. I've used Blur X on this to uh, cover up my misgivings. Um, but you know, it looks pretty good. And when combined, I've got a beautiful, beautiful field here, which I'm really happy with. I've fiddled with the levels in here. A uh, good little tip is with the screen transfer function, if you remove this little chain icon, you can adjust the R, G and B levels separately. So I do that to get the perfect blend that I want, which is usually with an image like this, I want to see the separation between the red and the blue areas. So I can see that streak across there. Um, I can see these patches of red sort of counterplaying with the blue. So it gives you a little bit more structure, which I really like. But what I'm really excited about is Edekar. I can clearly see the homunculus here, um, which makes me happy. What I want to do is get that shell in and this little bow shock here. And you can notice that there's some other points of red around here, which are actually already in the main image. Like you can see there, you've got some dots around there. So all of this is registered, so I can just combine these two layers in Photoshop. Uh, but that is easier said than done. So here's the image in Photoshop, and I've already gone ahead and done all this, but the first step was to remove the bright blob of Eda Car itself, which is all white and washed out. So I've created a second layer here, and I just put that layer over that one, and just manually rubbed it out. I didn't care about how messy this was because I know that I'm going to plop Edekar on top of this, but I didn't want to lose that ring. You can see that ring of red, all the red dots around it. So that's clearly part of the object. So after some careful tweaking of blending layers and feathering and masking, uh, I got to this, which I think is really cool. You can see that bow shock across there but you still see all the red areas and not a single star has moved. This is actually where it is in space. Even though this is a composite, it's same camera, same time, same place, same star registration. This is how it is. I haven't, you know, just plopped it there randomly. This is actually where it's located. so happy with this image and I'm so happy with the Celestron C14 telescope as well. It's opened up a whole nother dimension in the typical nebula photos that I do. I'm sort of going for smaller targets and smaller details and this was a perfect example of that. Now I did promise a shoot off between my big daily driver, the C14, and the little Aperture 75Q. So while I spent three days pulling in all that data for Carina and Edekar, the Aperture nailed an image in one single session, just one good night. Same target, same conditions. Check this out.
you're as impressed as I am, you probably know that this is a fairly budget rig. Like it's not a cheap rig. None of the parts I've chosen to build this rig are cheaper than anything else. But I picked every part because they are low end but high quality. I want to be able to take this telescope traveling but I don't want to compromise on quality. And this Aperture 75Q and QHY Minicam 8 combination, highly recommend. Anyway, thanks to Testar for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. And I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. It feels good to be back. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.